So as you no doubt have heard by now, or maybe you haven't, we're getting a bunch of new banners in 2.4. Among them are Shenhe and Yunjin, accompanied by a Xiao rerun. And after that, we're getting a Gan Yu and Zhang Li rerun. I can already hear your wallets crying, and for good reason. We have a lot of good characters, a lot of good options here. So let's talk about what makes these characters different and why it's going to be such a difficult decision to pick between them. Gan Yu has been a community favorite since she released, although there was some confusion about what her role would be initially. She turns out she can be a phenomenal both support and main carry DPS. She can put out massive damage safely from a distance. She has a taunt so that things don't attack her, and her ult also lets her do damage while she's not even on the field. Another pro here is that she really does not depend on her constellations at all to do solid damage yeah they help but she just at c0 can blow up the world she does really well in reaction comp she can enable reactions or she can trigger melt herself she has some really solid build options as well that give you some flexibility a good starter sets the blizzard strayer set you run the four piece of that and crit damage and crit rate become less of a concern beyond that you can run two piece blizzard strayer two piece attack percent set shimanawa's or gladiators and ultimately my preference is leaning in on the wanderer's troop set but only once you have the stats that enable you to run that four piece another thing that makes building her a little bit easier is the fact that her ascension stat is crit damage. It gives you some flexibility in maintaining those good ratios. Now, while she has a lot of good things going for her, there are also a few negatives. They're not, not huge deal breakers, but she is a bow character and her playstyle involves using charged bow attacks. And so if you play on mobile and find that difficult or you just don't like making a bunch of charged attacks, well, that could be a deal breaker. So I'd, uh, you know, pull out Amber. Pull out Amber, see how it feels using Amber for a little bit. And if you like her charged attack playstyle, then you know, gone use like that, but times a thousand. And also, she is very squishy. She's going to find it somewhat difficult to reach 20k hit points. And so if she winds up taking damage, she will take a lot of it. And it does not take a lot for her to be knocked down. But wait, we also have the Geo Archon himself contending for your wishes. Zhongli is one of those just call him a generational character. He comes out and he breaks the game. There are not many characters like him. He goes in every single party you can think of, and he just has so much going for him. He's timeless. And by timeless, I mean that he he, he is very, very resistant to power creep. Regardless of what state the game is in, I can see a use for Zhongli. His shield is nuts. Back when he first released, everyone said Zhongli doesn't do a lot of damage, and there was a big fuss, and so he actually got buffed. But even before he was buffed, I thought he was personally fine. Now, I, I, I love my Peepaw, don't get me wrong, and we make lots of suit for him. His shield has always been a huge part of his kit. It legitimately makes it so you can ignore basically all the mechanics in the game. If you have his shield, you will forget how to dodge because you don't have to dodge anymore. This shield of his it scales off of HP, and what that means is the more hit points he has, the stronger his shield gets. And as I'm sure many of us have been farming artifact domains, we've realized that uh, we get a lot of HP artifacts and maybe not so many with the stats that we want. But where Zhongli's concerned, he is super easy to build out of the gate. All you need is to get those HP artifacts and throw them on him and max out his HP, get a blue three-star spear that, that, that levels up with HP percentage, and you can have an insane Zhongli shield right out of the gate for all, almost no investment whatsoever or using your throwaway artifacts you have sitting on your account right now. After that, you can start building him into one of many different artifact set configurations that can focus on different areas. The four-piece Millilith set helps enable him as, as a great support. You run two-piece Millilith, two-piece Noblesse, two-piece Petra. Uh, you know, get HP and a little boost for his ult. There's a lot you can do. You can even run a double physical set bonus on him if you want to use him as a main DPS. Now he's like super unga bunga, roll your face on the keyboard, smash the world. He's not going to do it as fast as all the other characters, but he can totally get that done as well. And let me show you something very special to my heart. We've only triple crowned one character in Genshin Impact. And it's our boy. What else? What else does Zhongli have going for him? Well, he is exceptionally tall. He is, he is among the tallest characters in the game. He's also very old. So you have to be delicate with him. If you throw him off a cliff, he will break his ankles. Back to his shield. Did you know that his shield will shred the damage resistance of whatever you're fighting that's near you? So not only is his shield busted and makes it so you don't have to dodge and you can roll your face on the keyboard and be good to go, but he makes all your other characters stronger just by existing in a party with them. And because he fits in any party if you happen to have someone like albedo by the way my favorite duo to run in this game is Zhongli albedo that geo resonance is solid too because when your characters are shielded they do more damage so he's uh he, he, he buffs the crap out of you exploration where exploration is concerned he is the number one mining character in this game where i'm concerned you stand in the middle of a mineral node or a bunch of mineral nodes you hold his e skill to 
get his shield, drop his pillar, and, well, you will watch all of those minerals explode around you. Did I mention how good his shield is? So, there are a few negatives, if you want to call them that, that come with Zhongli. You will forget how to dodge. So when you have to do the Spiral Abyss and one of your parties has Zhongli and the other one doesn't, you might you might stand in the uh, stand in the bad for a little bit too long. He does drop a Geo Construct that, uh, that emanates Geo damage every few seconds. It makes other Geo Constructs on the field also have that same effect. You know, in its own right, it's 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 it's, it's a good thing. It does some 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 chip damage for there. It has sort of sporadic energy generation. But every time you put that pillar on the field, I don't care where your character is, you will find a way to accidentally start climbing it and. That can be kind of frustrating. Oh, and uh, Osmanthus wine tastes the same as I remember. And finally, we have the angsty boy himself, Shao. Y'all, Shao has a pretty different play style. He does good burst damage through the use of his elemental skill, which makes him dart ahead. And his elemental burst lets him jump up and down, doing very large AoE animo damage. One of the first things that I appreciated about Shao when I got him on his first banner was the fact that he makes exploration a lot easier. You jump off a cliff in places you couldn't normally glide before. Well, while you're in the air, you used his elemental... Wow, words, brain, mind. While you're in the air, you use his elemental skill to dart forward, and then you keep gliding. And as it recharges, you can dart forward more. You can get places faster. You can go further distances. And if you decide, hey, I want to land right here, but you're really high up, you can plunge from who cares how high, and you won't take any fall damage. Uh, you know, a benefit, speaking of not taking too much damage to his ult, is that because he has to jump up and down a whole bunch, he's not taking as much damage generally while he's in the air because, well, the other enemies aren't in the air with him. But when he lands during his ult, somehow he smacks his face on the ground and he likes to hurt himself. So there's that too. It's kind of a two-sided thing. He does a lot of damage to himself, maybe more so than the enemies he's fighting. And as you're leveling him, he does ascend with crit rate, which means you have some flexibility when trying to balance out his crit ratios. And in line with that, he actually, I think, functions best when you mix sets. He doesn't really have a four-piece set that is, I would call, ideal instead. And what I run is a two-piece Viridescent set, two-piece Gladiator or Shimanawas to get that attack boost along with the Animo damage bonus. One thing I want to emphasize with Xiao over really either of the other two characters we've discussed is he does have a very specific play style that involves uh, some, some quick actions and also some waiting. And what I mean by that is his ult does take a while to charge. And so usually you'll want to have a team composition built around him where you have a character who can act as a battery for Xiao. And what I mean by battery is that you have a character that generates elemental particles that can help charge Xiao's ult because the majority of his damage that he'll do is through his elemental skills, which have a long cooldown and his ult, which also takes quite a while to charge up. So by building a party that is designed to charge his ult, you can have less downtime with Xiao overall. And that, in my opinion, will make him more enjoyable to play. Um, again, a reminder, he does hurt himself. So having a character that can provide a shield or perhaps a solid healing effect in his party will also go a long way towards making him more enjoyable. And, you know, you know, at, at the end of the day, his playstyle might not jive with everyone. Uh, you know, personally, while I acknowledge he has, he has the capability to be a very strong unit, having played a lot of characters in this game, he is, he's not my favorite to play. He does not have my favorite play style. Yeah, and one other thing I would point out is that Xiao is vulnerable to power creep. You know, he's a character based around the damage he can deal. And as the game progresses, there is a high likelihood that we'll get other animo characters in time, other spear users in time that can deal damage and deal potentially more than he can. So something to keep in mind. So between these three characters, I don't necessarily think you can go wrong. Ultimately, it's going to come down to, to each person's individual preferences, which character, which play style they prefer. But Xiao, Ganyu, Zhongli are all fantastic characters in the greater scheme of Genshin Impact that will make your account better. Good luck and may the 50-50s be with you.